presentation this morning. Um, delighted to have Claire give her presentation on So Simple. Come on. So as Anne mentioned, my name is Claire Lee and my mission of So is as well, So Simple. Some of my earliest memories are of sitting at the feet of my older sister as they sewed late into the night on the sewing machine, turning normal pieces of fabric into beautiful dresses, skirts, and coats. And I always remember, I'll always remember counting down the days to when I could learn how to sew. And when I was eight years old, my grandmother sat me down at the sewing machine, gave me a piece of lined paper, and said, here, figure out how to make the lines straight. And that really started my journey into sewing. And like many family members before me, it's almost a rite of passage to learning to sew on a sewing machine, something we all did through 4-H, a youth development program. And through 4-H, I also learned the motto to make your best better. And in making my best better and in sewing, I learned to lead, I learned to improve, and I learned to help the people around me. And as a 10-year Indiana 4-H'er, I learned that it was more about, it was more than just the end product. It was about the friends I met along the way and the skills I acquired. While I learned how to accept my high waist and my narrow shoulders, I also learned how to think critically, how to problem solve, and how to communicate with others around me. And for me, 4-H really provided a framework for change. As I ended my time sewing through 4-H, I looked back on my great friendships and the people I met and realized that there were fewer and fewer eight-year-olds starting sewing. And I was like, well, this is strange. And upon talking to my mom, I realized that our sewing program in our county had decreased to just a fifth of its size from 30 years earlier. And so in 2013, I used 4-H as a framework for change to start my journey in sewing. And I started a mini 4-H fashion review project because initially I thought the reason that kids weren't sewing was that they weren't excited about it. And while this project has been very successful and kids loved it, there wasn't an increase of sewers. And I realized that it wasn't just that they weren't excited about it. The problem was much deeper. And what I was seeing on a local level, I realized was taking a much bigger scale on the national level. While there were fewer sewers in my county, as on a nation, in 1989, there was 60% 60, 60 of U.S. teenagers knew how to sew on a machine. Two-thirds of those did it for fun. In our group of fellows, only six people knew how to sew on a button, and very few people had any real sewing experience. And in a survey done by the University of Missouri, they found that millenni er, millennials had a much less knowledge of sewing, of hemming, of laundry than their baby boomer forefathers. Another thing that I realized was the amount of textile waste in the United States was increasing. In 2013, 14.3 million tons of textile waste was created from minor damages and tears, things that could easily be replaced if you had just basic sewing knowledge. And while some may say that sewing is an antiquated trade that will be leaving us soon, if you look around, you realize you can create clothing, you can have a creative outlet, and you can easy, even use sewing as a vehicle for leadership. And while the lack of sewing skills is very apparent, one thing many people don't realize is there's also a lack of leadership training. In a study done by the National 4-H Council, they found that most young people think that leadership skills are very important to success, but only one in three young people say they possess the skills to be a leader. So the underlying problems that I found on why sewing just wasn't important anymore is that first, there's a lack of knowledgeable sewing instructors. Only three states require family and consumer sciences classes, and few parents have the sewing skills to pass on to their children. 
For me and for my parents, many of us learned our skills from either our parents or those home at classes. But with, cut, with funding being cut for schools, there just aren't the resources available to children anymore. And then in addition, there's also a lack of readily available sewing resources. It used to be that you could go to a fabric store in every town, but many of the chains are closing, and while the resources are readily available online and not that expensive, it's just not that available to the average American. So my, problem, my solution to these problems are so simple. A short series of camps for beginning sewers in Shelby County, Indiana. My goal is to have six camps throughout the year, varying in length depending on when they happen. Upon talking to some parents and sewers, I realized that during the school year, I could have short day camps and weekend camps, and during the summer, longer camps, to instill basic sewing and leadership skills and provide the resources for mentorship and continued success. So why Shelby County, Indiana? Well, for me, Shelby County has many connections. Through 10 years of being a 4-H'er and also my family connections, I have the community connections to get this program off the ground. I know many of my grandmother's home ec friends and sewers who can help me as mentors, and I also have a wonderful relationship with the 4-H Foundation. But in addition, in this county, there's a need and desire for a camp like this. Most of the schools have lost their home ec programs, and a majority of the students in the local school district are on free and reduced lunch. And upon talking with parents and students, I realized that they really want another option besides just sports and ballet and art class. So overall, it is my vision and mission to create a sustainable program to instill sewing and leadership skills in the students to be a creative outlet and a vehicle for change. And on the short term, I really just want to get kids excited about sewing and instill these basic skills. But on the long term, it is my goal to develop a toolkit of resources that I can share with other communities across the nation to begin programs like this and also to connect children in, with possible community mentors. While some of the ladies I talked to, the old sewers, are in the communities currently, there isn't a bridge to connect the young and the old and pass on the skills. But there's also some indirect outcomes that I'm really excited about. Because through sewing, as I learn to accept all of the different parts of my body, you're able to improve self-esteem and create a positive body image while also developing life hobby skills for children so that maybe one day everyone in this room knows how to sew on a button and hem a pair of pants. With that, currently I'm developing a Sew Simple curriculum and I'm focusing on different sewing and leadership skills. I was looking at the basics. For sewing, I used my mentor Joanne Leatherman and her sewers to say, what are the skills that you need to make a pair of pants? They don't have to be the best pair of pants, but they need to fit and work. And so I'm looking at things like reading a pattern, sewing straight, how to thread a needle, so that when these kids leave, they have applicable skills. And in leadership skills, I was looking for things that create the leader. You know, sometimes you imagine the leader is the one at the front of the pack leading, but they need to have critical thinking skills and problem solving skills to get to that point. And right now I'm also working on some different activities for the children to partake in. From a simple pillowcase or PJ pants that they can complete in a day, to a community service project that makes them know that they're helping the community, to just some really fun activities to get them excited about what's going on. And so this is what a sample camp may be. I've worked with my mentor to develop a day and a half camp, a day camp, and just a morning camp with different activities, and working to see how it fits together, and ensuring that throughout the time, the children have the ability to not only leave with a finished product, but also have time to run around and get to know each other and have a lot of fun. So as I leave Mount Vernon, I'm working on a two-pronged action plan to finish my development and implement my program by the fall of 2016. So in the next few months, I will be finalizing my curriculum, as you saw earlier, with my mentor, in addition to securing funding for my program. Honestly, I only need about $1,000 to uh, get this program off the ground, as I really don't um, 
need much besides some machines and some fabric and sewing notions. And I'm looking towards my community that has supported me through so many years of sewing to help with that. In addition, I'm working on finalizing my location and my marketing of my Sew so Simple camps and recruiting my volunteer mentors by starting with those home ec women who helped me so many years ago. And in the next few months, I'll be selecting a small group, about 10 children, for my inaugural camp. I want to start small so we can see how it goes and then build from there, in addition to securing some fabric and patterns to get started. And by October 16, I hope to have the first Sew so Simple sewing camp. So for me, success comes on a few different levels. Immediately, I will find success by launching the program in 2016. But intermediately, I'd like to see an increase in the number of sewers and um, an increase in the number of resources to the children. But long term, I really want this program to grow into something more. In my original community, to have the mentors take it on as something of their own and allow it to grow into other communities around the Indiana and the nation. So thank you for listening to So Simple. Do you have any questions? So with public speaking, one activity I'm hoping to implement is short speeches at the end called, What Did I Make? Where the kids can come up to the mentors and explain what they did, have you know, their PJ pants on, to not only you know, model what they've done, but explain what they've done. So then when they go home, they can tell their friends, look, I put in you know, an inch and a fourth seam, and I was able to make you know, these great pair of pants. Emerson? Did you sew yourself the items on the screen? Yes. And my dress. The one you're wearing now? Yes. Wow. Shelby, did you have a question? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there are any more questions, thank you so much.